Good day, everybody. It's Tuesday, the first day of March 2016. Happy March! The Keurig crisis continues. Uh, that's alliteration, and it's frustration. It is. So, you know, I told you my brother messed up the Keurig. Yeah. I called the 1-800 number yesterday, got someone on the phone in less than 10 minutes. We were back in business. This morning, Susario, it's out again. I out again. Oh. No caffeine, no black the, tea. These are first world problems. It's, it's true. true. Yeah. It's true, and it seems to be chronic. Today, family, friends, and loved ones will say their final goodbyes to the Virginia police officer shot and killed on her first day on the job. Officer Ashley Gwendon's funeral is taking place today at a chapel in Woodbridge, Virginia. Last night, a sea of red and blue as hundreds of patrol cars filed in procession, escorting the hearse, carrying her body to a funeral home. Investigators say 32-year-old Ronald Hamilton killed his wife after she called police during a domestic dispute on Saturday. As police responded to the scene, authorities say Hamilton shot and killed Officer Gwendon, then shot and wounded two other officers. Hey, Bob, thanks so much. Apple scores a big win in a New York City court as it continues to fight the FBI's court order out in California. A federal judge has ruled investigators cannot force Apple to unlock an iPhone owned by a convicted drug dealer. The government had requested Apple to break the phone's security code without wiping out the data so it could access the contact info of other suspected drug dealers. Well, the judge ruled that it's not Apple's obligation to assist the government in its investigation against its will. Today, the head of both companies will face off on Capitol Hill in front of a House Judiciary Committee hearing. Good morning. A family argument ends in gunfire. Two people shot inside a North Philadelphia home while eight others were inside, including a one-year-old boy. This happened just before midnight on the 3300 block of Percy Street. Philadelphia police say two men, 23 and 26 years old, were shot during the fight. Police tell Fox 29 they know who that shooter is and they're searching for that person right now. A mosquito-borne virus we first warned you about only months ago has made its way to Philadelphia. The health department says a woman who recently returned from travel to the Caribbean is the first to be infected by the Zika virus in our city. Officials said she is now recovering without complications. The virus is most commonly transmitted from the bite of a mosquito, but we know it can also be transmitted through sex. Coming up at 630, Dave Kinchin will tell us how the disease is becoming a much bigger threat right here in our area. Let's look at your top stories. Mike and Alex, back to you. A string of violence has a South Philadelphia neighborhood on edge after multiple shootings in the past few days. Now, Mayor Kenny wants to bring back an old idea to help sort of stop the violence down there. Steve Keeley is live at City Hall to explain what this idea is. Good morning, Steve. A New Jersey mother accused of burning her newborn alive now says She's guilty. 23-year-old Hyphen Kimberly Dorvalet pled guilty to aggravated manslaughter in court yesterday. Prosecutors say the Pemberton Township woman doused her baby girl in accelerant and set her on fire back in January. The baby was just an hour old. Investigators say she hid her pregnancy from her family. Prosecutors will recommend a 30-year prison term during sentencing in April. We now know why a building collapsed Saturday on South Patton Street in Graves Ferry. LNI says the sudden failure of a stone foundation wall caved in the home, leaving a man trapped. Contractors expect to have the property cleaned up by today. The man who was trapped inside the home is in stable condition and recovering. Secret Service detained a photographer at a Donald Trump rally yesterday. He was attempting to secure a better position to take pictures of a Black Lives Matter protest that interrupted the speech. Well, amateur video caught the incident as it unfolded. You can see Time Magazine photographer Chris Morris exchanging words with the agent. Then the agent grabs him, takes him right to the ground. Seconds later, Morris is seen touching the agent in an attempt to illustrate his version of what went down. He's escorted out of that event. The agent has not yet been identified, and the Secret Service says it is investigating, quote, the exact circumstances. Coming. Right. So Facebook may now have uh, a track for your friend's activity. You can track your friends, I guess, to a deeper degree now? Let me explain to you, I wish okay? You would. The developer of Facebook's Messenger looked at the app's website and says that it had a good idea of people's sleeping patterns. Oh. He created a source code that checks Facebook every 10 minutes to get a picture of who is and is not active. He linked to the source code in his blog post, making it available for anyone to try. Facebook says that their terms go against people collecting people's personal data. But I guess he's trying to see when people are awake and when they're sleeping, when people are the most active on Facebook, when they're not. That gives you a good idea of when you might get engagement. You know about that. Well, it makes sense at 2.30 in the morning. 
fewer people are on Facebook, right? Depends on what your job is. Hey, electronic cigarettes more dangerous than experts previously thought, according to researchers in Hong Kong. The devices contain one million times more harmful substances than polluted air and cancer-causing substances. And for the first time, scientists have discovered some contain toxins linked to fertility problems, fetal development issues, and thyroid disruption. The study prompted health officials there to call for an immediate ban on all e-cigarettes. Here's an idea. Don't smoke.